Day 764 of the Ukrainian war map, also known as the Russo-Ukrainian war. Jelzy here, and today is another update as I take a simplified and down-to-earth approach to some of the most important happenings on the ground in Ukraine. So starting off, we'll take a look at those Russian losses as currently, Russia sits on more than 440,000 military personnel losses. So a little bit of a milestone there, and... Uh, that figure also represents an additional 820 in the past day. Then as for hardware losses, 8 tanks, 27 APVs and 28 artillery and 1 jet. But the way in which that jet was destroyed disallows its entry onto these stats. Which I never think is quite fair, but it just goes to show how conservative some of these already startling figures are. So we'll head across to the map now and take a look at that jet loss incident because after a pilot ejected, a Russian warplane plummeted into the Sevastopol Bay in occupied Crimea about 200 meters from the shore. But there is nuance as the Russian Su-35 jet was shot down by one of Russia's very own Crimea-based air defense systems, a Pantsir S-1 system. And it wasn't so long ago, just last month, that Russia lost a large string of jets and planes and even two A-50 AWACS radar planes around the same time with many of which submerged and promoted to submarines. But also, it wasn't long ago that Putin himself was saying that something like this could not happen because of Russia's amazingly modernized friend or foe identification systems incorporated into their air defense systems. And yet, here we stand, or those jets sink. And the reality is you couldn't count on all of your own digits the amount of times Russia has friendly fired on their own aircraft. I think it was about 23 times from memory. But it's not just jets as they have reportedly done it countless times with their artillerists on their frontline Storm Z assault groups. Yes, the Russian military is a trigger-happy, spray-and-pray method of madness based on paranoia with no situational awareness of the battlefield. And truly, Russia has become an international laughing stock. It's just embarrassing. But as for an event like this, think of the pilots. What a world to live in for Russian pilots. You're literally concerned every day about both sides of the conflict's air defense systems. It's just a completely senseless situation for a, a military to be in. Then we'll head across to the Ukrainian map proper today and we'll start out in the east at Novomikhailivka. So we'll zoom in right there and where we see an update on the southern end of the town and I'll show you that there with the updated Russian position on the map, although this is something I already mentioned about yesterday. Then, at the same time, at pretty much almost the same location, we saw a Russian tank pile up and cook off after a failed assault from the, the north of this location. Then, somewhere else in the east, uh, Ukrainian soldiers from the 53rd Separate Mechanized Brigade destroyed a Russian tank with the help of the Javelin ATGM, so the anti-tank guided missile. Quite the turret toss event in that one as well. Then somewhere in southern Ukraine, a Ukrainian FPV munition hits the rear of a moving Book M2 radar unit, setting it ablaze. Now specifically, it's the Russian 9S-36 target acquisition radar, which is a vital element for the Book air defense system. Then also somewhere in the south, in fact this one was just below, so south of the Dnipro River in the Kherson region, another Russian D-30 howitzer destroyed. And we're really seeing these D-30 122mm older Soviet howitzers being deployed by Russian forces more and more these days. And so just prior to this year, Russia were really fielding a lot of their SPG artillery, that is to say the 152mm howitzers, uh, the ones on tracked wheels, in big numbers. And now that I think about it, I can't remember them being spotted in the field in recent times. 
But either way, it's likely their stocks are low and they've been severely economizing the usage of them now. Then moving across on the map, so as for some separate unrelated Crimea updates. As the head of Ukraine's security services has reported quite frequently now that Russia has significantly reduced its use of the Crimean bridge to transport weapons to the front lines following Ukrainian strikes that damaged the crossing. Now the 19 km bridge, or about 12 miles, and also known as the Kirsch Bridge, connects mainland Russia to the illegally annexed Crimean Peninsula, serving as a vital supply route for Russian forces in Ukraine since completion in about 2018. And as a refresher for the history, the recent history on this, uh, this bridge, so Ukrainian attacks in October 2022 and July of 2023 heavily damaged the bridge with plans for the strikes originating in March 2022. Now, prior to these attacks, about 45 trains carrying weapons and ammunition crossed the bridge daily. But now, only four or five trains pass per day, with most being passenger or consumer goods. And so this is why the striking of and loss of Russian landing ships is so devastating for Russia. And further to that, Russian proxy authorities in occupied Crimea frequently close the bridge due to reports of explosions and drone strikes. In fact, there was a time when I used to mention the bridge closure every day that it happened. But it's no longer feasible for me to announce that anymore because at the current rate, you can pretty much assume it's closed for a period of time every first or second day now. Then, as for the map a little bit more generally, in an interview with CBS News, Ukrainian President Zelensky warns that Russia might launch a major offensive in late May or June. He emphasized the urgent need for increased support from allies to bolster Ukraine's defenses against anticipated assaults. Now, despite the stabilization on the battlefield compared to previous months, Zelensky stressed that Ukraine requires additional arms, particularly Patriot air defense systems and artillery, to effectively prepare for the potential Russian onslaught. The president also went on to highlight the broader implications of Russia's ambitions beyond Ukraine, suggesting that other European nations and even the United States could be at risk if Ukraine falls to Putin's forces, as the consequences of Moscow's ambitions beyond Ukraine would inherently start to drag the situation into a global conflict. Of course, Putin recently said he won't attack NATO or anyone else, but he says a lot of things and he makes a lot of bad decisions. And frankly, he, he says a lot of lies, like you can see right there on the screen right now. And so the world needs to stand up to a bully. Otherwise, those bullies will just walk all over you. Then headed across to some news for today. So the Czech Republic has now concluded deals for 1 million artillery shells to be sent to Ukraine, with initial shipments expected to commence in April. Now, this sizable initiative led by Czechia has garnered support from 15 countries who have pledged to finance the 2 billion euro endeavor. And of note, the contracts actually exceeded the initially announced 800,000 shells by an additional 200,000 rounds, bringing that total to 1 million. Of note, there is also a separate 500,000 shells being sourced later by the same initiative as well. And although the suppliers remain undisclosed, speculation points to Turkey, India, South Korea, and South Africa as potential sources. Then in some other hardware news updates, German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius handed over a new military aid package for Ukraine worth 500 million euros. It includes quite the laundry list of items, most notably including missiles for the Patriot air defense launches, and bridge layers, mine rollers and mine clearers, ammunition for leopard tanks, 20 Martyr IFVs, so the infantry fighting vehicles, and much, much more. Then in some related hardware news, and in a bid to bolster Ukraine's aerial drone capabilities, 
British engineers at Evolve Dynamics are working on technological upgrades to counter Russian electronic warfare tactics. The firm aims to make Ukraine's drones more resilient against signal jamming by developing alternative radio link algorithms. And this ongoing ping pong game between adversaries has led to 85 upgrades to Evolve's Sky Mantis drones over the past two and a half years. So even before the full scale invasion into Ukraine. So with this type of news, it's all about technologically surpassing or overcoming signal jamming from enemy systems. This then allows Ukrainian drones to remain operational and unaffected, whilst at the same time severely limiting the performance of Russian drones in the process. Then in some other news, a high-ranking official from Russia's state nuclear energy company, Rosatom, has been arrested on suspicion of accepting a substantial bribe. The official was detained by the Federal Security Service, aka the FSB, in Moscow on March 27 and then formally arrested at the Basmani court in the Russian capital on March 28. Authorities allege that this arrested man solicited a bribe by the head of Orgeno Gostry, a private company that has long served as one of Rosatom's private contractors. And now this arrested individual faces the possibility of up to 15 years in prison if convicted of the current accusations. And so the arrests shed light on potential corruption within Russia's nuclear energy sector and its associated contracting companies. But whatever the case may be, there is never any shortage of high ranking members of Russian state owned or private enterprises getting dethroned from their positions of power. And in fact, more often than not, they don't live to see another day. A strange coincidence. Then in some other news, in a powerful statement, 39 Nobel laureates have urged the international community to ramp up support for Ukraine in the face of the direct and clear threat posed by Putin's regime to all of humanity. And so the distinguished group, which includes 16 winners in physiology and medicine, nine in physics, six in chemistry, four in literature, and perhaps surprisingly, even three in peace, have called for a substantial increase in aid to Ukraine and for the support for the democratic opposition in Russia and a refusal to recognize Putin as the legitimate president of Russia. The laureates implored world leaders and all people of goodwill to abandon any illusions about Putin and his criminal regime, emphasizing the urgency of the situation and the need to make decisive actions to counter the ongoing threat to global security and stability. Then moving across to a couple of quick funnies to round it all off today, guys. So starting off, a Russian tank operator deep within Russia at the Nizhny Tagil region seemingly lacking training driving on the streets as it has a bit of a fender bender accident with a civilian car. Now I believe this is a T-62 tank so honestly it's not just that it's old but it's also unmaintained garbage and in many cases known to have gearbox and engine and brake issues. Oh, of course, not to mention poorly trained Conscriptovich, Sergei or Ivan. Then as for a quick, super quick final funny to round it all off today, guys. So this one has no direct relation to the content in my videos, really, but it's a bit of a, a bit of harmless fun. So here we see a Russian delivery guy within the backdrop of the luxurious lands known as Russia as he goes to drop off and set down a package, but in post sanctioned economic downturn Russia, war leans on you. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed. Please continue to like and comment, I really appreciate all of that and the support, and I do hope to see all of you guys there in the next one. Cheers!